Hi again, my name is Gudmar Peterson. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. In my last video, I talked about uh, how I like to think about my training in three steps. The steps were shuffle and relax, number one, gaining control, number two, and then connect it or collect it, number three. So now I'm going to focus on the first step, shuffle and relax. And in my opinion, a very important part of that work is what I call one rain work. One rain work is, uh, can do wonders, I believe. And I think it's extremely important for everybody to have good understanding of it and, and know kind of how powerful it is. I'm gonna explain to you a little bit here first <coughs> on this horse. Um, very often, a big enemy of the rider is this undernock muscle here. This undernock muscle can be extremely strong. This is the muscle the horses use when they pull your head up and pull against your hand. They can be very, very strong this way. But there is one thing we need to know that is quite important, and that is that this antenna muscle is mainly very strong when they are straight. When you bend the horse, the antenna muscle isn't so strong anymore. If you just think about it, if you see a scared horse that's kind of in a flight mode, how is he going to stand? He's going to be straight, if he possibly can, and he's going to be high with his head. A relaxed horse is going to be more likely to be down with his head and bending and looking left and right. So we need to have control over this muscle, and we need to or be able to, um, what can I say, almost disconnect it, maybe not a good word, but it almost works that way. When we use one rein and we bend the horse, he is not able to use that muscle to fight against the horse much. Um, so let's get on and get started. I'm going to show you how this works. So the goal in the beginning here is to get this horse supple and relaxed. And what does that mean? That means I want to be able to get on my horse and release my reins and walk forward. I want to get to the point that he bends for me however much I want to. Now, that sounds simple, but it isn't always that simple. Let's say I get on a horse, I release my reins, I want to go forward, and he just takes off. He goes way faster than I want him to. Not necessarily out of control, but he goes faster than walk right away. Very tempting is just to pull the reins back, right? That's the brakes. Just pull the reins back and he'll slow down. But what that often does, is that creates more tension than it actually releases. I sometimes say that the rider's worst enemy is the rein. The rain, when the reins are used both together straight back, it often causes more tension than it actually releases. I'm sure a lot of you know the example where you get on a horse, he wants to go faster than you, you want to go slower, you pull back, he wants to go faster, you pull back, and you have like this tension going. And this tension often goes until you let the horse run up a hill or something like that and release this tension. In my opinion, that horse didn't have a lot of training value. That was basically you making the horse tired enough that he wanted to relax by himself. I want to have this feeling as soon as I get on my horse. I want the horse to be relaxed the moment I sit on him. And if he isn't relaxed, I want to deal with it correctly. So I'm going to make a rule here for myself and uh, for you too. I'm going to, the first few minutes, I'm going to ride this horse. I have a rule for myself that I am only allowed to use the right rein or the left hand, not both of them together. So this is a good example. See how he threw his head up in the air? When did that happen? When I took both reins back, his head came up and he got tense, pinned his ears back. He didn't like that. I can only use the right without the left or the left without the right. What does that mean? I can basically do whatever I can think of that only includes one rein or the other. Again, I cannot pull back on both reins at all. So let's get started. I'm going to ask this one to go to the right. And look at the left rein. It's totally loose. Loose left rein, and you want to go to the right. And the other rein is loose. He is working on the loose rein. Great. I want it to be that way. Only that, without the right now. I'm going to practice this a little bit. One rein or the other. 
here's a crucial point. When I change direction, see, now I'm going to go from the right bend to the left bend. Drop this one, then pick this one up. That's very much the key thing. I do not want to do it like this. I'm not going to do it the bad way. Look at this. Now I pull the right way before I let go of the left way. Now the other way here. Now I'm holding him back on the outside way. And what happens? His head came up. He is rather relaxed, so I'm not worried too much about that. But his head came up, and the bend wasn't as smooth. Drop this one, then take this one. So the bend is smooth. Think about this. When I bend this horse to the right, what happens to the left? It gets long, right? So the left rein has to allow for the left side to get long and then the other way around. And in the beginning, exaggerate. Let it go. Really exaggerate. Let it go. Don't try to just follow. Just drop it and then to use the other one. So the horse does not have to be in doubt. Do I have enough space to bend correctly or not? When you and the horse start to know each other very well, and you're very well connected, you can do it more by just following with the outside and not exaggerate so much. But in the beginning, let it go, exaggerate. Okay, now, let's imagine that my horse was going a little bit faster than I wanted. At some point, I'm going to take a very uh, tense, uh, Super excited to watch and show you how it really helps, but now I'm just showing it to you on a rather easy way. Let's imagine though that my horse is going a little bit faster than I want him to go. What I would do then, I would turn him, turn him, turn him, turn him, turn him until he reaches the speed that I want him to be at. So I would use the bend to slow the horse down. I would not use the pullback power, I use the banking power. It has been said. And it's so true. You have more control with one rein than two reins. Why? Because if the horse really wants to take off and really wants to go, and you pull back with both reins, and he doesn't want to slow down, he is not going to slow down. But if he really wants to go, and he doesn't want to slow down, and you pull him with one rein, you're more likely to get the horse under control. Way more likely. So easy for the horse to lock when he's straight. So this is the knowledge we use when we want the horse to be relaxed. Relaxing the neck. We never give him a chance to tighten up that under, under neck muscle to go against the rein. We just bend him so he knows he, he can't do it. Um, my horse is relaxed. So I don't have to like bend him a lot in order to slow him down. It's okay, he's walking on a loose rein. He's totally walking on a loose rein. Uh, so that first kind of uh, goal is reached as far as that goes. But I still need to make sure he is soft. I still need to make sure he can bend for me all I want. So even though he is relaxed, I'm still going to make sure that he bends not. So I'm going to bend him into a small circle, and I'm going to take him give a little bit of rein, and I want to get this feeling this empty feeling, right? That there is no resistance. Like he's saying, yes sir, how much do you want me to bend? I can bend however much you want me to. But the thing is also, the horse knows that when he's bent, he's not as strong. He knows that his strongest position is straight and high. So in order for the horse to bend a lot for you, it takes quite a bit of trust on his behalf. He needs to trust you. So. This is the beginning of a leadership work, for example. If I would have a horse that wouldn't trust me at all, and he would like be afraid of me and not trust me, he would not be bending like this. Not at all. He would be trying to be straight, he would be fighting me, he would want to be straight, 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 because there he is in uh, protect mode, and he can protect himself much better. Here, he is not very much protected. He is very vulnerable here. And this uh, extreme band position is quite vulnerable, so he needs to trust you. So it's a good test too, if the horse trusts you or not. It's suffering, and it's also a leadership work. So I even go as far as doing a one man stop. So I'm going to spiral this circle in here, and I'm going to ask him to come and tap his head all the way to my stirrup, and stop right there. One man stop. 
okay? Sometimes called the emergency brake. can be very helpful. Okay. But right now, I'm using the moment talk as a leadership exercise, but maybe first and foremost, in this case, shuffling exercise. Bending all the way. Let me step on the side, all the way to my stirrup. And when it does that, I count to three. One, two, three. Uh -uh -uh -uh. One, two, three, and then let it go. Okay? So, suffer and relaxed. First step is, in my opinion, to me, very much the question of this one way work. For me, it's extremely important that you have a good feeling and a good a uh, sense of when you're using your outside rein and when you're using your inside rein. It's more common than you think that we have this big tendency, humans, to use both reins together. If something goes wrong, our first instinct is just to pull back, pull back, pull back, because we think if we step on the brakes, all problems are solved. But the best brake you have is using one rein, not two, okay? So, I encourage you to practice using one, without the other, and then switching. Using this tool to make sure your horse is relaxed and supple. Use the bend to control the feet. If the horse is going too fast, you bend the horse to slow down. What do you do if the horse goes too slow? Well, you just drive him. You just ask him to go fast. That's not that hard. Can ask him to go back. So what I'm saying is, he should be relaxed. He should be supple, but he shouldn't be lazy. He shouldn't be half sleeping and half walking. He should be focused forward. So I'm gonna make a little bit bigger uh, circle here. This is what I want. He is focused. He's forward. At the right point, in he's going. He's staying focused. The reins are loose. He's going where I tell him to go. Wherever I point him is where he goes and keeps that direction until I tell him to go somewhere else. He's not trying to go faster, and he's not trying to go slow. If I ask him to bend, he bends. There's no resistance to that. How much bend do you want? He's willing and able to give me however much bend I want to. It's not only a question of trust. It's obviously also a question of physical ability. So if your horse is just plain stiff, he has a hard time bending, please don't expect him to do this in five minutes. It might take days, maybe even weeks, to get the horse to the point that he can reach his stirrup. And then you just give him that time. He needs to stretch. He needs to lengthen that outside. But never forget, in order for him to lengthen the outside, you got to lengthen the outside rein. And in the beginning, go ahead and exaggerate. Go ahead and exaggerate. It's totally fine. Just let it go. And learn to feel how much power you have with one rein, not, as, not so much with two reins. And practice timing your inside and outside. Now I'm going to switch. Drop, kick up. Drop it. Take this one up. One rein work has helped me a lot in my training. Um, I had this tendency, like most other people, to use this both reins. I just thought I needed to expect my horse to <coughs> listen to it. But let's not forget, horses are not born to be ridden. Horses are not born with a built-in communication system. We need to create it. Uh, horses have a huge tendency to be claustrophobic. They are claustrophobic animals by nature. And the easiest way to get your horse to be claustrophobic is pulling back on both reins on the same time. So, let's free them up, release the reins, use one rein at a time, get them supple, get them relaxed, and then we can move on. See you next time.